in this video, we're going to look into other misuses of statistics. In the previous video, we looked as to what are some ways that graphs can be misleading. So, it's already considered a misuse of statistics. Here, in this video, we're going to look in other ways wherein statistics can be used. Remember, the crooks already know these tricks. Honest men must learn them in self-defense. We must know how statistics can be misused so that we can defend ourselves from it and we can also avoid unintentionally doing them. One other misuse of statistics is called suspect samples. The first thing to consider is the sample that was used in the research study. Sometimes researchers use very small samples to obtain information. Several years ago, advertisements contained such statements as 3 out of 4 doctors survey recommend brands such and such. If only 4 doctors were surveyed, the results could have been obtained by chance alone. However, if 100 doctors were surveyed, the results might be quite different. Not just before, but advertisements nowadays still has the 3 out of 4, but now it has become quite bigger, 9 out of 10. Now, some might say it's just a proportion. It's that 9 out of 10 is a proportion. But still, though, it is still quite a small sample because we never know if it's really a proportion or they just really surveyed 10 doctors or 10 people. In that case, or in that way, the sample size is too small and it will result to poorly collected data. In future lessons, we will learn how small or how big a sample size should be. Another misuse of statistics is, a bi is biased sampling. A biased sampling method occurs if it systematically favors certain outcomes over the others. Sometimes the bias might be intentional, or some, but most of the time it is not. For example, your, you have product ma production material vials of 300, however, you're only selecting some. If, if not, even more, if a researcher asks people to voluntarily participate in a survey, the resulting sample is called a voluntary response sample or sim that is similar to bias polling. And voluntary responses are always biased. They only include people who choose to volunteer. Often, voluntary response samples oversample people who have strong opinions and undersample people who don't care much about the topic of the survey. Thus, inferences from a voluntary response sample are not as trustworthy as conclusions based on a random sample of entire population under consideration. So, bias sampling sometimes happens intentional but most of the time it's a mistake in sampling that causes bias sampling. In future lessons, we will learn what are the what are the techniques in getting a sample so that we will not do biased sampling. Another type of statistical distortion can occur where different values are used to represent the same data. For example, one political candidate who is running for re-election might say, During my administration, expenditures increased a mere 3%. His opponent, who is trying to unseat him, might say, During my opponent's administration, expenditures have increased a whopping $6 million. But here, both figures are correct. However, expressing a 3% increase as $6 million makes it sound like a very large increase. Here again, ask yourself, which measure better represents the data? So here, in this case, the same data is represented in two ways. And of course, you, would, you will choose something that is favorable to you. However, in statistics, especially in business statistics, we have to be very objective. This is common in business statistics. It's reported sometimes in percent so that the increase might not seem that much. Sometimes it's reported in the actual amount so that to see whether the amount is big or not or to give an impression that it is big or not big. So we have to be extra careful in those things. Again, ask yourself, how should the data be correctly interpreted or correctly represented? Another misuse of statistics is called detached statistics. A claim that uses a detached statistic is one in which no comparison is made. For example, you may hear a claim such as, our brand of crackers has one-third fewer calories. 
Here, no comparison is made. Won't there fewer calories than what? Another example is a claim that uses a detached statistic such as Brand A aspirin works 4 times faster. 4 times faster than what? When you see statements such as this, always ask yourself, compared to what? Since this was an issue, more, more advertisements now are saying that we don't compare it to nothing. We are saying that our brand is works four times faster than the leading brand, which is you know, also something that is quite detached because no one will claim that they they would claim rather that they're the leader, they're the best, but no one will claim that they are the leading brand. Similar to this one, wherein it's compared to nothing, is when you compare two different things or having a faulty analogy. Comparing things that are not comparable or using unfair or impractical criteria or comparison. So here, the comparison or analogy is technically valid but it has little or no practical meaning. For example, broccoli has significantly less fat than the leading candy bar. While both broccoli and candy bars can be considered snacks, comparing the two terms, the comparing the two in terms of fat content and ignoring the significant difference in taste leads to the false comparison. Here, here the saying that you cannot compare apples to oranges is applicable. You really cannot compare two things that are not comparable. So we have to be extra careful in comparing because we might be comparing things that are not actually qualified to be compared. Another example of misuse of statistics is implied connections. Many claims attempt to imply connections between variables that may not actually exist. For example, consider the following statement. Eating, eating fish may help to reduce your cholesterol. Notice the words may help. There's no guarantee that eating fish will definitely help you reduce your cholesterol. Studies suggest that using our exercise machine will reduce your weight. Here, the word suggest is used. And again, there is no guarantee that you will lose weight by using the exercise machine advertised. Another claim might say, taking calcium will lower blood pressure in some people. Note the word some is used. You may not be included in the group of some people. Be careful when you draw conclusions from claims that use the words may in some people and might help. Since these connections are just implied, we might not actually be sure if they're actually true or not, especially in your case. Some people might say, but we have studies and researches to back it up. But remember, if these studies only suggest or applicable to that specific study, it might not be true for all. So we have to be extra careful. Another misuse of statistics are faulty survey questions. When analyzing the results of a survey using questionnaires, you should be sure that the questions are properly written, since the way questions are phrased can often influence the way people answer them. For example, the responses to a question such as, do you feel that the North Huntington School District should build a new football stadium? might be answered differently than a question such as, do you favor increasing school taxes so that the North Huntington School District can build a new football stadium? Each question asks something a little different and the responses could be radically different. When you read it and interpret the results obtained from questionnaire surveys, watch out for some of these common mistakes made in writing survey questions. So we have to be extra careful in how questions are to be made. Although it says in the PowerPoint that there is a chapter 14 for this, faulty survey questionnaires is actually beyond the scope of business statistics. These are only some, but there are actually a lot more out there, and there might even some that we haven't thought of it yet. Remember, clarity and a point of reference are always important when it comes to using statistics. Because take a look at the picture. Statistically, 6 out of 7 dwarfs aren't happy. Well, which is actually true because there's only one dwarf that is named happy.